Hey folks, Mark Locklear here with uh, Screencast. This week is going to be on Chapter 12, uh, collect, uh, Collections and Generics. So this is a nice extension to uh, Chapter 11 on arrays. Um, you know, essentially arrays are kind of the basic, um, sort of the basic um, element or placeholders in Java. And then Collections and Generics sort of take arrays to another level, gives you more flexibility with the number of elements in addition to all kinds of nice methods that um, that 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 you might not otherwise have when using just a, a regular array in Java um, for the most part you're going to focus on the exercises you're going to focus on um, you're going to focus on array lists and link link lists but I'd encourage you to uh, you know maybe play with some of the different um, um, some of the different collections and map map types, and then also for the homework, I'm giving you the option of um, you can do either the three book exercises, which are pretty basic, fairly straightforward, uh, and you may want to challenge yourself a, a little bit. You, you can either do the three exercises in the book, or you can do either of the project exercises, project 12, uh, 12 one or twelve two. So that that's your choice. Uh, this that, that's your choice uh, this week. So what we're going to do is, uh, I think what I'm going to do is work through uh, exercise 12 ones, really basic. Um, I, I'll just sort of do the logic for you. You'll need to, if you do turn in exercise 12 one, you'll need to add the, the formatting to get, get the printing to uh, uh, look like the example in the book. But I'll walk you through adding an array list. So I'm just reading, uh, looking in the book here at exercise 12 one. It says, um, the first one, it says, uh, op open up project 12 one, look at the future value uh, program. That's what I've got open here. And so let's just go ahead and run that so we can see uh, what the functionality is sort of out of, out of the box. So if I'm gonna enter an investment amount and interest rate, number of years. And then notice if I continue here, you know, I'm, I'm going through this while loop a second time. I can enter some more I information. And then when I say no, it simply exits out. So what the what this exercise is asking you to do is add an array list. And uh, you're going to append to it each time. You're going to add a new set of results to it each time. And in the end, you're going to display the sum total of those uh, results. So if we look at uh, number two, it says declare a, a variable at the beginning of the main method for an array list that stores strings. You know, really straightforward. I, I pulled this from page uh, 373, and um, so I'm going to do this at the top. I'll do it up here before I do the scanner object. So I'm simply going to say new array list here, and then I'm going to do. Um, in fact, I think I'm just going to paste this in rather than you, you guys having to watch me type. So I'm simply doing an uh, array list, and then uh, in in those uh, angle brackets, you're going to put the the type. In this case, it's going to be a string. I'm naming my array list investments, and then we follow the new an array list syntax after that. So that, that creates the uh, that creates an array list called investments. And then all we need to do is, uh, well, let's read what it says. Uh, number three says, uh, after the code that, that calculates formats and displays the results for each calculation, add code that formats a string with the results of the calculation and then stores the string in an array list, all right? So for the most part, they've already given you a lot of the f formatting here. So I'm just gonna go in and add, um, th th they're, they're creating this string and storing it in a results variable here. That's what this code does. So all I'm gonna do is take and save this results variable. I'm gonna save that to my array list. And I'll do that, uh, I'll do that after they print the results here. So I'll do, uh, let's say, add results to array list, and then I'm gonna do something like. So remember, my the name of the the my the name of my array, array list was investments. So I'm just gonna say investments dot. And in fact, if I uh, just type the the dot there, it'll show me the. Um, It'll show me the methods that are, are, are that are available to, to that array list class, and we're simply going to do add. So I'm going to choose that, and then we're going to add results to it. Okay. 
We'll save that. Um, and then the last thing I need to do, of course, if I ran this now, nothing's going to happen because we haven't actually printed anything out, is uh, I'm just going to do a for loop, and I'll paste this code in. So after after the, the, the user chooses to exit the program, after they choose no, I want to uh, display the contents of the array list. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm just going to paste this in so you can see it. And so really straightforward what I'm doing here. Um, all I'm doing is I'm going to print out here is here is the array list output just so you can see it. I've got I'm using an, an enhanced for loop here and I'm just looping through the elements inside the investments array and um, printing the contents out. Okay. So let's see that uh, let's see that in action. So my first investment is going to be $100 a month, 8% interest for one year. And then I'm going to say yes here. And then it's going to be, uh, we'll do, let's say, $400 a month at 3% interest for one year. And then when I say no, notice that I get the contents of the... Well, I didn't mean to maximize that. Okay, so I got a little better view here. So you can see here we entered our um, entered our two entered our two in investments, and then when the user chooses no, uh, I'm simply outputting the uh, outputting the contents of the array here. Now again, you want to go in and format this like uh, like the book asks you to do, um, but um, that should give you a sense of an array list. And, and how, how that works. Again, really straightforward. And you'll do the same thing for a linked list in e exercise two. And then exercise three may be, um, may be a little more challenging, but it's, it's not terribly difficult either. So again, if, if you want a little more of a challenge, I would check out, um, check out one of the project exercises. Okay, that's all I've got. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, good luck.